This presentation focuses on what a blue economy means for the OECS, why it is important and how it meets the triple bottom line of growing economies, protecting the environment and advancing social well-being. The ocean covers more than two thirds of our planet and is fundamental to human well-being. It is the foundation of life, regulating the Earth's climate, producing oxygen and absorbing carbon dioxide. Driven by a growing global population and the opportunity for blue growth, the ocean is becoming an increasingly powerful economic frontier. It contributes 3 to 5% of global economic activity, or $1.5 trillion to $3 trillion a year, a figure projected to continue increasing. However, there is a balance to be found. The social and cultural fabric of millions and their physical and emotional well-being depends on the health of the ocean. More than 1.4 million people in the OECS live on or near the coast, and at 2.75 million square kilometres, the Caribbean Sea is a crucial resource. It is critical that we manage our ocean space in an integrated and effective way. The large ocean states of the OECS have much more ocean than land, and thus we need to recognise and take up the tremendous opportunities that our ocean resources can deliver to all our citizens if we plan, manage and care for them in a sustainable and responsive way. I once heard someone say that we very often look at the ocean in the Caribbean as what divides us, but at the same time it can be looked at as what joins us together. Nature underpins health, wealth, culture, identity and happiness. The natural capital approach explains the value of nature and the complex ways in which natural, social and economic systems interact. Natural capital is the world's stock of natural resources, including rocks, soil, air, water and all living things. We get a wide range of benefits called ecosystem services from this natural capital, which make our life possible. The most obvious ecosystem services include the food we eat and the water we drink. There are less visible ones, such as climate regulation and flood defences provided by mangroves, or the coastal protection provided by coral reefs. Even less visible are cultural services, like the inspiration we take from the natural environment. Without an understanding of these, it is difficult to see the bigger picture. Natural capital is like financial capital. If we spend too much, we run up debt, which ends in bankruptcy. Similarly, if we remove natural resources from the environment, we run up a debt which must be repaid, for example, by replanting mangroves or restoring coral reefs. If we keep removing natural capital without allowing recovery, we run the risk of local, regional or even global ecosystem collapse, natural bankruptcy. OECS nations depend on natural capital to generate income, so conservation of biodiversity is linked to social, cultural and economic realities. It has been estimated that Anguilla has an annual natural capital value of 92 million US dollars, mostly in tourism and fisheries, reflecting the importance of these sectors to the national economy and their dependence on the natural environment. It has also been estimated that the loss of reefs in the BVI will cost 74.3 million US dollars annually in natural capital, mainly due to a loss in the coastal protection provided by coral reefs, which would have to be replaced with coastal engineering. This is about 7% of total GDP, equivalent to the annual profits of all the bars and restaurants in the BVI. We have to take environment and social considerations um, along with economic for sustainable development. And therefore I don't look at this as a juxtaposition but as a necessary part of the process. So in that light I see that by achieving environmental objectives we will also achieve economic objectives within a context of sustainable development. In the OECS, the marine environment is incredibly important. Coral reefs, mangroves, seagrass beds, lagoons, estuaries and beaches make up the coral reef sub-ecosystem, the richest in biodiversity in the Caribbean. 10% of the world's coral reefs can be found here. Ocean health is vulnerable to human activities and climate change. Biodiversity and ecosystems are under threat and therefore so is the economic potential of the OECS. Marine pollution is ubiquitous in Caribbean waters and impacts natural capital including fisheries and the pristine marine environment so valued by tourism. Understanding and addressing this isn't just an environmental priority, it is an economic and social priority too. The estimated annual revenue loss of coral reef degradation alone to the natural capital of the Caribbean is between 350 and 870 million US dollars. Environmentally, oceans must be managed sustainably to protect fragile marine ecosystems. Economically, national economies rely on the ocean, 
this natural capital must be protected and sustained. Socially, the ocean is in the soul of island nations. It is not simply a place of work, but a place for relaxation, exercise and family, an integral part of daily life. For all these reasons, a transition to a blue economy approach is vital to ensure benefits continue for current and future generations. A blue economy focuses on generating wealth from our oceans and seas in a sustainable way and nurturing natural capital. It promotes economic growth, social inclusion and improvement of livelihoods, while at the same time ensuring environmental sustainability. Economic development, ocean health and social benefit are concepts that can live alongside one another, managed by a range of marine sectors and government policies that together set out a path for the sustainable use of ocean resources. Economic activity should be in balance with the long-term capacity of ocean ecosystems to support this activity and remain resilient and healthy. A blue economy includes existing sectors such as fisheries, shipping, tourism and coastal development, as well as new sectors such as marine energy, aquaculture, seabed mining and biotechnology. For established sectors, the transition to a blue economy is one where they go beyond business as usual and look to operate sustainably. For emerging sectors, a blue economy approach will provide the supporting environment in which they can flourish. While we were benefiting from the ocean for several years, I do not think that we were, we were necessarily thinking about sustainability. But with the coming of the blue economy, I think that um, we have to think about ourselves and we have to think about the future generations. It's just a new paradigm. It's um, a new paradigm shift in the way we manage the ocean in St. Kitts and Nevis. That is, we have to do it in a sustainable way. Making the transition to a blue economy requires good ocean governance that treats our ocean as a unique development space shaped by its ecosystem. This requires an integrated approach to ocean policy across all sectors that touch the oceans. We must not look at that development in silos. We need to make sure that whatever development and what economic growth that goes into tourism also trickles down into the man on the ground. And if that is not done, then we'll be able to have an imbalance. So whatever happens within tourism, within planning, they must create that type of balance. Or even the figures must show that tourism brings X amount into GDP. Fishing brings X amount. Diving and snorkeling bring X amount. But how can we increase? How can it all be done sustainably? We also have to look at the carrying capacity. That is very important. So if tourism talks about increasing tourist arrival or increasing um, yacht arrivals, increase of cruise ship arrivals, how does that increase impact on the marine environment? Is it going to be negatively or positively? So yes, numbers come in, but we need to look at the balance in terms of how all of these persons or individuals are going to use the resource and not diminish the value of that resource, very important. In 2013, the OECS Heads of Government endorsed a groundbreaking regional policy framework, the Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy, which was revised in 2019 as part of the Caribbean Regional Oceanscape Project. So at the OECS, uh, the sustainable ocean economy, or the blue economy, is delivered through the implementation of our Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy and Strategic Action Plan, otherwise called the ECROP. The ECROP is a document which was approved by the OECS Authority, that's the Heads of Government, in 2013. It is the international best practice for regional cooperation on matters pertaining to oceans. It seeks to deliver in the areas of economic, environmental and social sustainability. National ocean policies are also being developed. Aligned with the ECROP, they allow for national delivery of regional outcomes and goals. An NOP is a framework policy. It provides integration, coordination and cohesion to a complex national policy landscape 
and guide sustainable planning and development of ocean activities, as well as decision making on the ground. It doesn't replicate or replace other sector specific policies, but provides the national direction and framework within which sectors such as fisheries, maritime transport, tourism, energy, climate change, coastal development or adaptation can coexist. OECS nations are establishing national ocean governance committees, the key mechanism for intersectoral coordination and implementation of NOPs, and for overseeing broader aspects of ocean governance and a blue economy transition. There are some challenges, yes, in changing from a sectoral approach of doing business to a whole governance, um, whole government, multi-sectoral uh, implementation of ocean affairs. Uh, over the years, we have evolved in working in sectors. Now we have to roll that back to the indivisible um, roles of oceans and its multiple subcomponents. Across the world, marine spatial planning, or MSP, is used by governments as a way to map the ocean's health and wealth. MSP looks to identify all current and potential future activities within a blue economy, and to map these alongside the natural marine environment and the social and cultural uses of the ocean, and is particularly important in guiding decision-making and reducing conflict over multiple uses. It allows for extensive consultation with stakeholders and users of the sea to allow their interests to be represented and develop a rational interpretation of how your sea space can be best used to further a blue economy. Most OECS nations are already applying some aspects of MSP through area-based management tools such as designating shipping lanes, allocating fishing areas and implementing locally managed marine areas. Upscaling this integrated planning is likely to result in greater benefits in a fair and equitable way. Ocean governance is of extreme importance and um, marine spatial management, especially on an island, a small, a small island like Dominica, where we have the greatest amount of economic and commercial activity occurring on the coastline. It is important that we be able to uh, zone and to have different areas uh, demarcated for, to, to prevent uh, chaos and user conflict for conservation of the marine resources and for efficient use of the very limited space that we have for, for, for a, 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 an island. So marine spatial planning is of extreme importance. Planning for blue growth involves everyone. We all have a stake in how the ocean's resources are used. MSP needs coastal communities, fishers, tourism organisations, divers, snorkelers, shippers, the private sector and government authorities to come together and agree on a common vision for your shared ocean space and your blue economy. I would say that the whole wish list um, of economic goals and the blue economy can only be achieved from the grassroots. I believe that we have to look at individuals. We have to look at a critical number and until we reach a critical mass, um, that is where we're going to see um, that we've achieved um, the sustainable development um, goals and targets. So we must make it relevant to the individual on the ground. If it's not relevant to the individual on the ground, then we would not have achieved anything. When people think of, you know, they ask themselves, have I benefited from this? You know, they're saying, well, you know, have I gotten more food? Um, can I afford to pay school for my kids? Can I do something? And to them, it's only real if the impact or the benefit is there um, in a tangible way. So that As the OECS continues to transition to a blue economy, the region will more effectively drive the triple bottom line of sustainable development, growing economies, protecting the environment and advancing social well-being. Only by working together can we secure a sustainable future for our oceans, our nations and our people. We all have to decide how, where and when we will be part of this new blue future.